live exemplarily, love authentically, and lead relationally. This is the Inspired Family Leader Program with Samuel A. Bakutana, your host, a certified executive coach, an award-winning leadership consultant, a global speaker, and author. The CEO of Inspired Leaders International and the provincial president for the Fathers Union in Uganda. Greetings the people of the newest diocese that is going to be happening tomorrow, tomorrow morning, the West Wenzori. We send you greetings from the Fathers Union and we wish you an awesome inauguration, enthronement and consecration tomorrow. Today we are talking about a critical topic that can be a make it or break it for somebody watching right now. It can determine your success or become the crucible for your failure. We are talking about a man's pursuit of intimacy with God. A unique topic, right? <laughs> Especially when you look at the topics we've been handling here. A man's values. Mm -hmm. uh, the skills a man needs to lead his own family. Mm -hmm. And all these things we've been talking about. Today, we want to move away from the... Uh, the horizontal relationships and look at the vertical relationship and how it affects the horizontal relationships and everything around. With me in studio is a big team of very many people, but I will only be showing you one today on set. <laughs> and that is none other than Coach Lawrence Namale. Lawrence, you're welcome. Thank you so much. How have you been? I've been all right. It's been quite some ages yeah. since we last saw each other. I know, but um, I felt like when you're introducing yourself, yes. I felt like you are really up there uh -huh. and I'm diminishing in your presence. It's just because you haven't yet introduced yourself. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, yeah, it's viewers. It's good to have you today on this program. It's good to be here, someone. Yeah, I really how appreciate it. My family is okay. I think they are watching. Okay. And I'm blessed. You think or you know? I think they are watching. You know, at home there are very many things that could be going on. Yes. But they know I'm here. So if you're there, you're watching. <laughs> Hello. Hi. How are you doing? <laughs> awesome. I often start from the family because yes. this program it's is a family. the inspired family leader program. Exactly. So it's a leadership program, but which largely and majorly focuses on leading the yes. family. Yes. And from the worldview that I come from, I strongly believe that the family leader is the man mm. helped by his wife, mm. together having the children on their board of directors, mm. maybe the son being the minister of, uh, I don't know, natural resources, mm -hmm. the daughter being the minister of defense or minister mm. of health or mm. whatever, mm -hmm. but there is this president in the home mm. who has a vice president and together they focus on building mm. a strong and god honoring family. Mm. So I would like you to look into the camera and greet the people and introduce yourself to our viewers today. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, whatever place it is that you're watching this family show, my name is Lawrence Namale Akali, and I am a life coach and a purpose coach, a purpose practitioner. I am an author. My purpose in life is basically to inspire hope and enrich lives worldwide. I find inspiration from a scripture that says, God has given me the skill of the land so that I can speak a word in season to those who are weary. And I hope that uh, my words today will inspire you, will empower you one way or another to be a man or a woman of purpose and to be a man or a woman who is in hot pursuit of your maker and your God. Good to have you. I already feel inspired by your introduction. <laughs> Thank you so much. I met you quite a number of years ago. Yes. <clears throat> this is 2023. Mm -hmm. Eight years ago, to be specific. Mm -hmm. And I am sure you come from a neighboring country. Yes, you I come do. from the Republic of Kenya. Yes, sir. And here we are in Uganda. Yes, sir. A personal question. How, how did you end up here? <laughs> well, it was... <laughs> First of all, you've got to know that I didn't plan to be here. Okay. I did not plan to be here. It's something mm. that just happened because I think it's an opportunity that came ac across the, my, my life, mm. depending on where I was. Yes. I'm going to summarize it uh, very mm. fast. Uh, quite a number of years ago, in 2000, 2007, 2008 yes. there, there's a company called Safaricom in Kenya yes. Yes. that was doing an experiment mm. with a product, mm -hmm. a product called M-Pesa. Yeah. They had no mm -hmm. idea uh, how M-Pesa is going to turn out. <laughs> M-Pesa is basically the mobile money version yeah, mobile of, money. of Kenya. Yes. It began in Kenya. 
and it was an experiment. Yes. We could stop there and just talk a lot mm. because there are very many things that can can be can be learned from that. Yes. So what happened is that at that moment in time, very many um, nations were having new ideas about mo mobile telephony. Yes. Mobile phones were actually new. These smartphones were not there. Mm -hmm. We are using those other phones that uh, you have to punch like three times to get a letter and so on. We, we've suffered in this world. <laughs> and so what happened is that those days you used to buy a SIM card. Yes. And given that the SIM card did not have a lot of value in it, mm -hmm. what do you do? You use it and you throw it away. Yes. And so when mobile money or m -Pesa started in Kenya, it solved that particular problem. Mm -hmm. So people would buy their cards and now they could not throw away their cards because it is valuable. Yes. It has m -Pesa in it. Someone yeah. can send you money. It has it. money in it. Yes. So what happened is that when that problem was solved in Kenya, Uganda, MTN, mm -hmm. wanted to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. So they go to Kenya, they ask, how do you guys do this? And they were told, create a system, a technical mm -hmm. system that's going to help you. But the crux of the matter, the things that are going to help you uh, to succeed mm -hmm. is to have a team on the ground, yeah. which is responsible for recruiting and managing and training agents. And so the boss looks around in the organization. She wants to send people because what, what, um, what my boss was at that moment in time was a third party who was mm. working with Safaricom. Okay. And this third party is the one that was hiring ladies and gentlemen, young boys and girls, to go around the country basically to recruit these people, to recruit these agents and to manage them. So you sent to Uganda. So I was sent to Uganda to do the to replicate that success okay. over there. That's how I ended mobile up money. here. Mobile money. Uh, actually So when we say who discovered mobile uh, money, I did not discover mobile money. I did not discover I'm not like speak who discovered uh, you know uh, that kind the of source speaking. of river Nile. <laughs> <laughs> who discovered the source of the Nile as if they were no yeah, 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 yeah. there. So I did not discover that. I cannot I cannot stand here and say you know I'm the guy. I'm the, <laughs> yes. no I'm not. Really. So you come to Uganda and uh, that's where you met your wife? I come to Uganda and... Uh, Just fasting forward. Fasting forward, I come to Uganda and basically I get so much in, enthralled with this, uh, this, uh, this work that I'm doing. Mm. Uh, actually, you could say I discovered my purpose while I was here in this country. Mm -hmm. When I came, to, when I came from, from, Uganda, from Kenya, I didn't know what, uh, what it was about. Mm. But in doing my work, I discovered what my purpose was. And in so doing, I also met my wife. We got married in 20-something, 20 mm. <laughs> 20, 2010, mm. 2011, I don't know, she knows better. No, 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 no. Uh, on this program, that one is not acceptable. Okay. When did you get married? I don't know. It's it's something like 2010 or 2011, but it's 2010. <laughs> <laughs> That's unacceptable on this program. <laughs> yeah, so I'm not okay. so good with that. Mm. So we uh, we got married and now we have two kids. Yes. I've been staying in this country ever since that time. Yeah. But there was a small uh, space of time when I traveled to, we traveled as a family mm. to Ghana mm. for about two about. years or, so, or something like that. And uh, we were doing the same thing, actually. MTN Ghana needed the same thing. So mm. I went to Ghana to do it. So coming back to East Africa after two years, it was easier to come to Uganda than to go back to Kenya because yeah. my, my roots while going to Ghana mm. were in Uganda. You were made for Uganda, so. <laughs> <laughs> stay, stay and settle. And Thank you. Uh, build Thank a home. You. Thank indeed. you for the invite. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. This is your place. Yes. So. How are you personally related to the topic of today? A man's pursuit of intimacy with God. Just briefly, what's your connection with this topic at a personal level? At a personal level, this to me, I found it to be one of the most important aspects of my life. Mm -hmm. Both in the past and also in the present. Mm -hmm. I'm saying in the past and in the present because there was a, a bridge of time, as a lull period of time where that subject matter was not important. Okay. And when it was not important, when basically I put it down or it got crowded out, my life started suffering a lot of things, a lot of up upheavals, especially in my marriage. Mm. And the reason as to why I am... Actually, we were supposed to talk about something else. Mm. Originally, originally, we were supposed mm, to talk about purpose. Later, this came but in. this has come in because I really sense in my spirit that this is very critical right yeah. now because yeah. it is working for me. Mm. Uh, this is not the first time I'm sharing this. Yeah. I've, I've, shared, I've shared this with my family. Mm. I've shared this with uh, some, some, some members of our, of our church. Mm. And they've got enthralled with this message. Okay. And it is working for me. So 
I'm not here to theorize. Mm. I'm here to talk about what is working. Share experience. Exactly. I have a friend of mine who served together at Inspired Leaders International and recently he made a statement that left us, you know, wiser yeah. than before he opened his mouth to speak. Mm-hmm. He said, "Before I got married, I used to give a lot of advice. <laughs> now after some years down the the road in marriage, mm-hmm. I only now share experience." <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Experience is a good teacher. You see when when I speak words like this when I talk about intimacy, yes. it's easy for me to go to the dictionary and get a definition of what mm. intimacy is, mm. uh, step 1, 2, 3 and four, mm. so on and so forth of yeah. how to And you know I'm a theorist. Mm-hmm. I have very many theories out there. Yeah. I have very many quotes that I've created. Yeah. But when and it comes books. to intimacy how many books have you written so far? I have four books I've four written books, so far. Yes. yes. And but when, thousands of of podcasts. Actually, podcast is 1,500 plus. Yes. So by the end of uh, next year, it will be 2,000 episodes. Yeah. Right. So in there, there, there are quite a number of theories. Mm. But when it comes to intimacy with to God, this topic of today, this topic yes. is not theory for so me. So let, let's hit the road now. What does it actually mean to be intimate? Generally speaking, just the word generally speaking. Yeah, generally, uh, the word intimate comes from the Latin word intimus which basically means closer closer yes it mm-hmm. means deeper and closer okay <clears throat> so if you're talking about intimacy you're talking about two people who are close mm-hmm. with each other mm-hmm. if uh, we're talking about Samuel and his wife you and I are not intimate I wonder why <laughs> <laughs> anyway go ahead <laughs> but you and your wife yes. must be intimate if you are not God forbid Mm. So it's about being close. Okay. Now, when it comes to man and woman, or uh, even man and man, we've, we've had examples in the Bible where mm. some men, two men, were very intimate one with another. Mm. That's David and Jonathan. Mm-hmm. And you know uh, David as uh, an example of someone, someone who is really pursuing intimacy mm. in everything that he was doing. Mm. So intimacy means closeness. It okay. means deeper. Okay. It's something so of the heart. Deeper, close. Yes. So now, when it comes to men, majority of whom are busy watching and taking notes, we get excited when we hear that word. And I will tell you why. Mm. Because every time we think of intimacy, we think of a woman. Yeah. What does this thing have to do with God? What is intimacy with God? Every time we hear intimacy, we think of being intimate with a woman. And now here you come, you talk of intimacy with God. What is that? About exactly. Well, Samuel, I will tell you this, that I do think and I do believe that this is one of the most important aspects of our lives, if not the most important. So important that God was willing to shed his own blood for it to be recovered. If you, if you are a believer in the Bible, or at least if someone who is watching yes. and they subscribe to the idea that it is God who made them to be in this place or to be alive on this earth, mm-hmm. then the subject of intimacy with the maker or with the creator must be something of virtual, uh, uh, absolute important to them. So Why? what is intimacy with God? So intimacy with God is basically God, first of all, it begins with God. God mm. desiring his creation that is responsive and has uh, power to make a decision mm. to willingly love him mm-hmm. and cherish him and obey him so that in turn he can be able to reveal himself in greater dimension to them. And you know, intimacy is not done in a crowd. Mm-hmm. Intimacy is done mm-hmm. one-on-one. It's, there's some sense of exclusivity. These, so, days, these days people make uh, intim- intimacy very public. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when, when you're talking about, when you're talking about intimacy with roads. God, you're talking about you being not you in a crowd of people yeah. l- lifting hands and so on and so forth. There's, there's a place for that. Yes. But the, the core that God is looking for is someone knowing Him yes. intimately, someone knowing closely, His heart closely, deeply. deeply. Why is that? Because God Himself wants it. I mean, there's no question about that. That if you look from the beginning, God is basically looking for a man. There are very many numerous scriptures which mm. we do not have time to go into. Mm. But even in Genesis itself, mm. we, we look, we see God looking to have a relationship with his people. Mm-hmm. It says that God will be walking in the garden in the cool of the day. 
to, to, to talk to, to Adam, his creation. Yeah. And then when that thing was broken, God has gone all the way to make sure that it is mended so that still, even with the introduction of sin, God makes sure that he removes that particular detail so that me and you can have access directly with him. Okay. So we are talking about the willingness to love and cherish God in yes. the life of the man. The willingness to love yes. and cherish God, the hunger to know him. Mm -hmm. God being intimate with us, he already knows you. Yes. He already knows me. Yes. The Bible tells us that he sees our thoughts from afar. He knows exactly what we're going to say next. Mission. There's absolutely nothing that God doesn't know about you. So when, when you talk about God being close, it's not his problem. Mm. He doesn't have a problem there. It is the other part mm -hmm. of us being close to him, as in seeking to know him much more on a personal level. Yeah, so the experience me. that I have with God is totally different from what you have with God. Indeed. It's contextual. It reminds me of something that somebody said, that uh, it's not about whether God is still speaking nowadays, it's about whether we are still listening. Are we listening? <laughs> are we, do we want to listen? Yes. In the first place, do you okay. want to listen? So that's why you use it, the word hunger. Yes. Hunger to know God deeply. Yes. To know God, not to know about no, God. No, 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 no. They are, those are two different things. Mm -hmm. The Bible tells us about two guys, mm. okay, two, two, two people. Number mm. one, Moses. Yes. And then number two, the Israelites. About mm -hmm. Moses, it says he knew the ways of God. Okay. All right? Mm. And um, uh, about the Israelites, it says he, they knew the acts of God. Oh, okay. Moses knew the ways Moses of God. Moses knew the ways of Israelites God. Israelites knew the acts. the acts of God. Basically, they're looking to God for what <laughs> he can do. Mm. But Moses is looking to God for who he is. Mm. Moses is the one who said, God, if you see, God, Moses, uh, God told Moses that uh, I'm going to send your angels to go with you. Mm. But he said, no, that's not enough. If you as God is not going to come, we're not moving anywhere. Okay. But if God was to show up today and tell some people, I'm going to send you my angel mm. to, to, to go with you, people will basically celebrate. People are looking for acts of God instead of God himself. They are looking for the miracles for of the God, miracles. the God of the miracles. Yes. So therefore, intimacy with God is the willing... Uh, the, the, the willingness to love and cherish God, the hunger to know him deeply so that we are like Moses, we know the ways of God, not like Israelites who only knew the acts of God. Exactly. A man watching may say, mm -hmm. well, that doesn't put food on my table, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. I would like you to speak to that man. What makes intimacy with God important, especially in family leadership? You see, the idea of this does not put food on my table. I hear it a lot. I hear it a lot, and it's not just on issues about intimacy. Yes. It's with very many other issues. Yeah. I'm going to go to this quote by, uh, it must be Al Albert Einstein. Mm. He said something to the effect that not everything that counts can be counted, mm. and not everything that can be counted counts. counts. There are things no, that... Wait. Please say it again. Not everything that can be counted counts. But not, not everything, everything that, that, counts beca that counts can, can be, be counted. counted. Exactly. Okay. In other words, there are some things you cannot put a transactional figure on them. Yes. For example, Samuel, you made a decision to get married to charity. Yeah. We cannot quantify really? the level of the intensity of the decision that you made. <laughs> we, we can't know. But it has impacted your life in a very big way. Mm -hmm. There are very many decisions you've made to maybe start this channel, for example. Yes. And it has made an impact in, in this life. So the person who is saying that this thing does not put food on my table mm. is looking at life in a transactional way. Mm. In fact, that's a very um, narrow way of looking at life. Mm. We, we, we are looking at life in a, in a way that I put in something, I get in something. Yes. If I can see it, if I can verify it, if I can count it, if mm -hmm. there is certainty that at the end of the month, at the end of the week, or at the end of the day, there is something that is going to come out of it, then that's what I want. Mm -hmm. But if I cannot say this intimacy, how is it connected to my, my food we on need, the table? Yes. How, does it, how, how is it connected to me getting money in my bank? Mm -hmm. You see, we need to look at life in a holistic manner. <clears throat> and I'm going just to, to, to throw this in there. And say this, that one, when all is said and done, mm. ask yourself, what is the most important thing in life? When all is That's said and done. That's a question that many people can answer differently. Yes, exactly. Somebody but would you say, see, my family, 
another person will say money another person will say my job another person will say my purpose another person will say um, uh, my contribution to Uganda another person exactly. will say I mean many things so we we'll learn if you wanted to learn the good answer to that question yes normally you look at the guys who are dying yes and researches have been done on very many guys of that nature mm. either guys who are dying mm. or guys who are in their in the twilight of their years yes in the and evening they, of their in life. the evening of their lives they are asked what matters <laughs> they will tell you that for the most part mm. it's normally three things nearly mm -hmm. th not not many things mm -hmm. number one my relationship with my people that's the most important thing mm -hmm. and then number two when, when you say my people are we talking about that is that is maybe family okay and and uh, friends and so on basically human beings relationship okay, with other relationships people. Yes. yes and then they will also say the 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 purpose for which i was created to to be alive and <laughs> finally some people will talk about god mm -hmm. three important things in life mm. so when you talk about intimacy with god why this is important it's because yes. it's an anchor it's an mm -hmm. anchor for the soul of man mm -hmm. it's where we get our roots Mm. You see, I'm saying this with experience because where there was no anchor in my life, mm. my leadership in the family was the most pathetic of all. Is that so? It was suffering big time. Mm -hmm. In fact, it was suffering to, to, to areas where the two of us mm. would be like, if you want to stay married, stay. let me know. Oh, wow. You cannot say that yeah. when the anchor is holding. When you are mm. anchored in intimacy with God, mm -hmm. there are some things that it does to you. It mm. might not put food exactly on your table, but what will you do with peace of mind uh, somewhere? Mm. When you have peace of mind because you are anchored in God, mm. you become more creative, mm. right? Mm. You become more productive, therefore you can earn much more money. Are you saying, therefore, that people who are... Uh, intimate with God are the ones earning more money here. Are Not necessarily. Are more creative than others. Not necessarily. So how do we I am saying we where there is the, where there is lack of intimacy with yes. God, yes. chances are that those things, yes. those upheavals, yes. can easily creep in. Okay. Can easily creep in. And now when we're talking about intimacy with God, we should avoid, and this is a big mistake that people normally make. Mm -hmm. We should avoid packaging things like this mm. as a silver bullet. Yes. A silver bullet is one thing that you use mm. and it gives you answers to everything. A magic wand. A magic wand. Mm. Intimacy with God, my friend, is not a magic wand. Mm -hmm. It is a pillar. It is, it is a core pillar mm. in the things that you do in your life. Yes. It, it is the one that many other things emanate from. Like it's now a it's an anchor. Wheel, it's a not steering wheel. Not a spare so, tire. Not a spare tire. So if, if you're not intimate with him, it's, chances are that you can still make money. Mm. You can still do uh, meet your goals and so on and so forth. But as the person who doesn't have intimacy with God, if mm. they are at peace with themselves, mm. if they are at peace with God, and if they are at peace with the things that they're supposed to do, and if they are at peace with other people, mm. chances are that you might find that some guys, yes, I have the money, yes, I have the hot wife, yes, I have the car, but something is missing. Mm. There's just something that is not in place. Mm. So if, if you're out there and you're wondering, how is this important to me? I want to tell you this. When you're having a team that is winning, yeah. you don't change the winning team. What do you do? You improve it. Okay. So one of the ways, if you're out there and your life is sizzling, I mean, your wife is good to you, <laughs> your, 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 your kids your are proud of fat. you, your, your bank account is fat and so on, don't change. I mean, kudos, congratulations to you, kudos for what you're doing. But there's one thing, mm. I'm going to use the story in the Bible, where there's a young man with mm. the same description that you've just given me, <laughs> who approached Jesus Christ and said, I have done this, I've mm. done this, I've done this, I've done this. There's this thing we call unconscious incompetence. Unconscious incompetence, whereby you don't know that you, and don't, you know. don't know that you don't uh -huh. know. Aha. He unconscious incompetence. incompetence. You don't know something, yes. and you even don't know that, that you, you don't, don't know, know it. it. Exactly. Now, when it comes to intimacy with God, there are some people who have this unconscious incompetence. Wow. As in... There's, there's nothing that is wrong, so to speak, with that, their lives. That sounds like ignorant ignorance. 
<laughs> there's, some, there's nothing, they feel like there's nothing wrong with my life. What, what can happen? Yes. Until Jesus Christ says, comes and uh, asks him, go and do all the Ten Commandments. He says, I've done all, the, I've done all of them. Yeah. As in, I'm good. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm lacking I'm nothing. Man. And then he says, go and sell all your possessions and then come follow me. What was he telling this guy? He was telling him that you don't know everything. There's, mm. some, there's one thing you are lacking. So if you're out there and your bank account is fat, mm -hmm. uh, your kids are proud of you, they're excelling in their school and they're doing everything, your wife can't wait to, for you to come back and just give you a hug and kiss and so on and so forth, and your manager at work is happy with you, everything is happening, but you don't have intimacy with God, you can do it also. You don't change a winning team, you mm -hmm. improve it. So I would encourage you, to try this out and maybe yeah. i should share my story as to why I, I'm, I'm saying that this this yeah. is important and you know i'm intrigued by what you're sharing and i would like you to briefly share part of your story indeed yeah because i have known you as a you know this wonderful coach that has coached people and all over the place although you have written books some of them the, the forward was given by people abroad yeah John Stanko, John Stanko yes. the author of a book I read in 2012 and it revolutionized my whole thing yes. called uh, So Many Leaders, So Little Leadership. Yes. So you've done all these things. You were talking of more than a thousand podcasts that uh, are yeah. listened to by the whole world. You, mm. you lead an, an organization. How we thought those kinds of people don't come to now be talking about these things you are talking about, no, being intimate with God. We thought those ones would be talking of the new theory I have discovered, <laughs> uh, no. uh, another new book on uh, psychoanalysis. And So what's your story? See, when it comes to intimacy with God, one of the things that I, I could say it's, it's God's grace mm -hmm. that enabled me to get to know this message of intimacy with yes. him. When I got born again some time back in, I think, the year 2000. Mm -hmm. I know you're going to crucify me by saying I yeah, think. I think. <laughs> some of these things you should be sure about them. <laughs> so what happened is that by his grace, he allowed me to hunger for him mm. and to know him intimately. Now, Samuel, I was raised in a family mm. where my parents were outright disciplinarians. And in such a way that... That makes the two of us. Yes. So you see, the, the problem with that is that they will focus much more on discipline mm. and at the expense of relationship. So we yes. didn't really have a relationship with them. And they will sometimes what they call discipline is mere punishment. No, 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 it is, it, is, it, is, it, is, it is not necessarily punishment. It is mm. much more worse than punishment because you are beaten and also the words that are spoken against you mm. and then the, the attitude that is, I mean, meted towards you for days on end. Okay. So you don't recover really. So the ideas of, you know, hugging each other, mm. laughing with each other were not necessarily there. Mm. So I got intimate with God in 1998, somewhere around mm. there, uh, after getting born again. It changed my life. Mm -hmm. So from me, Jesus Christ said, out of your belly shall flow yeah. rivers of living water. Living waters. Out of me there was just this unstoppable love and urge and wanting to hug my mom mm -hmm. wanting to hug my dad but it's mm -hmm. <laughs> it's weird be careful yeah, yeah it's it's weird see why how did i get into that place where i, I felt easy to hug, mm -hmm. to hug them mm -hmm. it's because something has had been changed inside of me yes from so i continued living and so on and it it, it became one of my hottest pursuit in life mm -hmm. until recently a few years back that i just crowded it out with things mm -hmm. you know it, <laughs> it, it wasn't a priority anymore mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i could give very many excuses by the end of the day it was not a priority yeah. anymore yeah. Look warm, so much so maybe. that it, it, not, it wasn't even existing mm -hmm. so much so that the things that are all abhor in terms of sin i mean it will become familiarity just breeds contempt i'm so yes. familiar with sin mm -hmm. earlier on in 1998 i will not i will not photocopy a cd mm -hmm. You buy a Don Moen CD, mm. I couldn't photocopy it because it, it pricked my heart. This is copyright infringement. Yeah. I can't steal music. Mm. You understand? Yes. But later on, after you know, I benched this idea of intimacy, things, I mean, how many songs have I photocopied? Mm -hmm. I mean, countless. Mm -hmm. So much so that the closeness with God is kind of God just faded out of the scene. Mm. And now that started affecting my family leadership. 
Okay, I'm preaching papas, mm -hmm. I'm writing books, mm -hmm. I am speaking in seminars in and all that, conferences and so on, but my family leadership is not at par. My wife tells me there are things you're speaking to mm -hmm. people and I'm not seeing them at you are home. Not doing them here. Exactly. And I don't feel like I want to do these things. I mean, it's just something else has taken over. Mm. Until such a time that I put my foot down and say, oh, wait a minute. Until when my marriage was on the, on the brink mm. of collapse. Mm. Mm. As in, we've tried everything. We've tried mm. counseling and mm. so on. Nothing is happening. <laughs> and so I said, God, I have been away. I need to come back. Mm. I don't know what the fear of God is. I want to yes. know. And even the prayer itself was the driest thing ever. And it took a season of time and a season of teachings that God just brought my way. Mm. So much so that now my hunger for him started increasing. It was like jump starting. It was like mattress. jump starting me once again. You know those things that normally do in mm. the in the in the in the word, you know, clear. Yeah. Poof. yeah. yeah. <laughs> so God was clearing poof, yeah. to resuscitate and resuscitated me. Heart. And now the flow started coming coming back. The intimacy with God started coming back. You will see your wife, and by the way, I'll go to prayer and I will tell my wife, I mean I will tell God mm. she is the problem. And I'll count to God this, this, this. She hmm. said this, she did, she did this. Mm -hmm. But when the intimacy with God comes, I look at her totally different. I mean, yeah. absolutely different. Why? Because the, the, the vertical connection with God is alive and it is existing. So many and times even in our marriages, therefore, what we see is just because of how we see. No, yeah, yeah. It's because of the lenses through which no, we are looking no. at the person we are looking yes. at. And also the people put on masks. Yes. I am a coach. Yes. I mean, how can I have a failed marriage? Mm. I'm a coach. What are you talking about? Yeah. So I put on my best foot forward. Yeah. So someone looks at me and looks like this guy. In fact, by the way, do you know he invited me some, um, some time earlier on? Yes, I do. On this show. I remember the details. And I said, I remember the I cannot. Yeah, I remember that, you invited you here yes. and you said you were not ready, I am not to, ready. Come to a TV program yeah. and speak because yeah. of the things you were going through. Exactly. Then. Yes. That was a moment when there was absolutely no intimacy with yes. God. I yes. was what you will say a nominal Christian. Mm. As in you go to church, you do the bare minimum, mm. you pray and even your prayers, I mean you're just fulfilling all righteousness. You are not awesome. hungry for God to to reveal himself to you to to, to just put something in your heart and just pull you to himself yeah. to know him in context. I that was, wasn't happening. So that started building. When I started going back to God, it started building and building and building. So much so that today we were supposed to talk about purpose. Mm. But when you reached out and I told you, mm. I really feel in my heart right now that the message of purpose is not the yeah. message that I need to talk about today yeah. mm -hmm. because of the recent past I've been talking about intimacy with God nearly mm -hmm. to everyone that I meet mm -hmm. and to uh, groups that I belong to that has I been the you. message and to me it has worked if you right. if you call my wife right now you have her number yes, if I you do. call her right now she will give you testimonies mm -hmm. upon testimonies don't I don't want to me I can call her you, right you, you now can call her right now <laughs> during the program <laughs> Beth we send you we send you our love and greetings yeah. Ma Madame Beth Mujushana Male and your children, we wish you the best in your life, in your marriage, in your ministry, and thank you for releasing your dear husband to come and be with us here and share his testimony and share uh, his message and share his experiences. So, as you have heard, intimacy with God is very paramount because, number one, it becomes an anchor for your soul as a man in your family. You need an anchor. And secondly, it brings a peace of mind. <laughs> if you don't have a peace of mind, it, it doesn't matter whatever else, whichever other piece of thing you have in your hand, you need a peace of mind. It mess with God, according to Lawrence, deepens that in your life. And then thirdly, it strengthens your relationships as you are hearing the experience that Coach Lawrence is sharing with us. But also, it feels, most importantly, it feels the inner void. There is a man I saw recently in the city of Kampala. There is a place called Murago, where we have the National Referral Hospital. There are some signposts around there. In fact, some time ago, there used to be quite many of them. They removed them. But this man was looking at the signposts, and he looked like he was quarreling with them, pointing around, and he was alone, and he didn't look like a madman. He was mm -hmm. dressed very smartly. He looked diplomatic, but he was diplomatically quarreling <laughs> with signposts. 
That's when you know that a man lacks the inner peace. Mm. <laughs> this intimacy with God is what gives you, is what fills that inner void. Yeah. But here is a question. Yes, sir. We used to think that these things are supposed to be done by religious leaders, apostle, presiding apostle, uh, uh, prophet, archbishop, uh, uh, archbishop, <laughs> uh, bishop, reverend, um, evangelist, Bible teacher, expositor, one Post. who does exegesis, harmonetics, Sunday, and homiletics. <laughs> Why are you getting this thing out of those religious circles into the everyday man's life? That this thing of intimacy with God transcends, you know, a, a certain religious box of somebody yeah. is a bishop, somebody is a reverend, somebody is a... But now you are bringing it down and handing it over to every man. Yeah. It is actually not me handing it over to every man. Mm -hmm. It is God himself. There are quite a number of references in scripture. Mm. That God is basically hungry for the soul of man. God yeah. is hungry to have a relationship. There are very many places God says, Come to me, all you are labor and, and heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Mm. He says in, in, uh, in, in the Old Testament, he says, Even though your sins are as red as scarlet, come, let us reason together. They shall, they shall be as white as snow. In Ephesians 3, 12, he, he says, You can come to me boldly because you've been washed, you've been cleansed. In Hebrews uh, 10, 19, he says the same thing. Basically, Basically, God wants. So I can say this: that when it comes to intimacy with God, there are no mm. gatekeepers. When it comes to intimacy with God, there are no gatekeepers. There are no gatekeepers. There All those no, guys you mentioned. No brokers. No, no, no. There are no brokers. There is no mediator. Mm -hmm. No middleman. There's one mediator between God and man: the man, Lord Jesus Christ. Any other person can be someone who maybe do what I'm doing right now. Yes. Try and a just emphasize, of learning, just facilitate and teach yes. you and show mm. you. Maybe you can try this, you can do this and so on and so forth. Or maybe just open your eyes to, yeah. uh, to and your heart to, to know that, hey, wait a minute, that, that's something that I was missing. But I cannot be a gatekeeper in that you must come to my service yes. to feel God or to meet God. Mm -hmm. We must come, we must come to my church to meet God. <laughs> that is not the, it is not the reserve of a human being. Because the only person who has done that is Jesus Christ through his sacrifice on the cross. He's the only mediator between God and man. And when he died on the cross, the Bible says that the curtain was torn into two. The curtain was that thing, big thing in the, in the physical temple in Israel, mm. which will never be torn by human hands. Mm. But it was torn from, heaven, uh, from, from bottom down, showing that it was God trying to analogize and say that the way into the Holy of Holies mm. is now open to everyone. Jews Everyone. and Gentiles, Every man men and, and women, boys and girls, this, I mean, those ones who are disabled, those ones who are not, every single human being has access into yes. the presence of God. It is not a reserve of leaders. Yes. And I will tell you this, Samuel, mm. one of the biggest killers of intimacy with God is religion. Say that again. One of the biggest killers of intimacy with God is religion. Are you safe? Routine. Are you safe? I am very safe. <laughs> your pastor is watching your program. <laughs> Routine. Mm. You see, this, <laughs> these structures we put together, you know, uh, uh, where we, we, it's so weird. Mm. We are so reverent of, quote unquote, men of God mm. than God himself. Yeah. You could yeah. actually be in the presence of God in your closet at home. Mm. And you can reverence God there and you can meet God there. I saw some people kissing some people's shoes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, it's that. pathetic. I mean, why don't you and they will they will give you they will give you very they'll quote very many scriptures. Give you many that excuses. Is giving double honor to ah, man, God. Forget it. I mean, channel that to the presence of God. The man of God has his place. In fact, it yeah. is God who normally puts these people in place for specific functions to equip you. As a believer, mm. that's the function of a man of God, the function of an apostle, a bishop, four, yes, 11, 12, 13, to equip people for the work, for of, the work of ministry. Mm. When Jesus Christ actually uh, came and started calling the disciples, the first order of service for them was to be with him. And then he sent and them. Then he sent them. You get? Mm. That's the order. So I do believe that in fact, I, 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 have, I, have, I have a podcast that I've recorded and I've tagged you in. It's going to come next mm. month. Mm. That leadership is not a profession. Mm. That's a theory. I'm still yes. developing it. Yes. It's, not a, it's not a profession like saying, mm. my profession engineer. is engineer. Mm. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to have my career in leadership. Mm. <laughs> you get? Mm -hmm. There's nothing like that. 
leadership is a calling whichever form of leadership it is yeah. whether you are a man trying to raise up a family mm. that position is a calling it's a calling or whether you are a woman as a leader by the way a woman is also a leader yes, trying to support the man yes. it's a calling in fact next Saturday we that's what we're talking about I'm hosting in council Byron Mwanje of the International Justice Mission and you will be talking about the call of, of leadership. leadership upon the man. Exactly. Mm. So if So you don't want to miss next Saturday. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> if leadership is a calling, mm. who is the one calling? It has to be God who is calling people into leadership. And S some people exercise leadership in a way that we don't feel like they are called by God to do that. Well, sometimes, you see, at the end of the day, Jesus said you'll know people by their fruits. Yes. Uh, if, if you feel I'm not leading the way God, I mean, the way I'm supposed to be led, mm. uh, basically, I am supposed to be, as a leader, I'm supposed to be much more truer to God than I am to you and your feelings. Okay. But if I am truer to God, chances are that I am going to nail very many things that will actually impact you mm. positively mm. as the one who is being um, ministered to by my leadership. All right. So if leadership is a calling, then all of us need to be intimate with God. Okay. If we're not intimate with God, I shudder to think of this. The people who have been put in positions of leadership, even mm. in church, mm. I mean, you can have a very... Um, I mean, glorious moment with God the whole week. And then you go to church. Mm. <laughs> and you, you freeze. Because the so-called... You so -called, cold. Yeah, the, the people who are supposed to be leading <laughs> in that particular service are not intimate with God. You've been intimate with God the whole mm. week. Mm. And then you get into a service and it's as dry as I don't know what. We because... And I'm, I'm not saying that is it, it's always that way, but I'm saying chances are that yes, if happens. you are a leader and God has put you in a position of leadership, whether it's in the family or leading a congregation, your first, your first call is to be in his presence and to hear a word that he wants to be sent to the people. Or even if you're a worship leader, mm. why are you regurg regurgitating that song? We sang the song in January, in February, in March, in April. And every What's time, the problem? And every time you are leading worship, we That's know the that song. there is that one song hey, you always bring. What is the problem here? The problem is people are not intimate with God. People are not in the presence of God. And so they bring us stale things. And so you go to church and it's dead. What if the Holy Spirit, like they often say, is leading them to keep singing that song? No, 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 no. If the Holy Spirit is leading you to keep singing that song, the impact and the repercussions will be felt and will okay. be seen. Yeah, impact. Yes. So, to cut the long story short, indeed, everyone is supposed to be intimate with God. Everyone. Because everyone was created by Him. Exactly. And should have a good and deep and vibrant relationship with Him. Yeah, exactly. No need for mediators and what we can have teachers, we can have those that equip us. Yeah. But all of us need to go there ourselves all of us. and have a relationship exactly. with the creator. So uh, before we can even go to the next point, yes. the, the, the barometer is this. Mm -hmm. Let's just give people the barometer. When is the last time you actually felt, felt the manifest presence of God alone? When is the last time you felt it? You felt like, hey, God is in this place. Or I feel God. Or I want to worship God. Where is the place where I can go to just be with God? When is the last time that happened to you? If it's not this week, then there's a problem. If it has ever happened. If it has ever happened. Before you talk of this week. <laughs> Coach Lawrence, yes, sir. we have very many good men. Mm -hmm. good, and I'm using these words intentionally. We have very many good men. Mm. They love their wives. They look after their children. Mm. Honestly, when you look at them, they are leading their families well without being intimate with God. Mm. They are truly leading their families well. Mm -hmm. Where does that leave this conversation? Well, how about if they, I mean, if, if you can do better, if someone tells you that you can do better, won't you accept the challenge of doing better if you're actually it's working whatever it is that you're doing is working don't you think if someone tells you that it can actually be much more if you have a million and someone tells you you can have two million won't you be interested in that if i need the two million if you need the two million I okay just be okay with my one yeah million that's the thing working. that's the thing that's the thing you can be content with whatever it is that you have yeah. but 
Also, if you wanted something much more, mm. we're not forcing people to be intimate with God and so on. <laughs> if whatever you're doing at home is working, mm. please maintain that. Mm -hmm. But we're also saying that check your heart and see. Yes. Remember, we've just said that God has called you mm -hmm. into leadership. Check your heart and see. Could it be possible mm. that you're missing something? Could it be possible that if this added ingredient comes into your life, yes. whatever you're experiencing can even be much better. Mm -hmm. Could it be possible that you can go to another notch? There be much more that yeah. I am not tapping into. There, the, and the answer is there is much more. Certainly. In God, you can never exhaust it. There but is the much more. The here, my brother, and the irony here is that whereas that is true, then there is this other side of the people, the men in our midst who are really intimate with God. It's like they are inseparable. I know one of them who, for him, he doesn't even quote uh, verses. He, he went past that level. Mm. That one, he left it for the Bakutanas to quote. Mm. Uh, what does he do? He quotes chapters. <laughs> oh, oh, memory. I'm telling you, yeah. you meet him and as I describe him, maybe some people will know the person I'm talking about because mm. he's here in the city and quite well known mm. in some circles. Mm -hmm. He meets you and he says, my brother Lawrence, good to see you. And then he starts to say, I feel God is telling me that your word is. Then he says, uh, Psalm 20, may the Lord be with you. He says the whole psalm, may, may the Lord God of Zion may be with you. Yeah. And, uh, he's, and then after that, because mm. this is where now my point is. Mm. Then after that he says, ah, but now brother, I, I don't have some transport, take me home. Now, now you feel like this man is anointed and annoying. <laughs> so when as you, you are saying that these ones who are leading their families well without intimacy with God can still get much more if they were in you know good level of intimacy with God mm -hmm. there is this other team of men mm -hmm. who are intimate with God they are always on the prayer mountain <laughs> praying in every overnight no. they know scripture and you see, but when you look at how they treat their wives yeah. It's pathetic. Yeah. When you look at their their sense of responsibility towards their children, mm -hmm. they are so disappointed. Mm -hmm. When you look at the results they produce in their workplaces mm -hmm. as professionals, mm -hmm. they should have been fired last week. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's pretense. B basically, uh, let me start with quoting. You talked about uh, he can be able to quote. Sarah is watching, my daughter Sarah. There's a, a scripture that she can quote a whole chapter. She's, uh, how old? She's 10. She can quote a whole chapter. I'm uh, glad you didn't say, I think he's a pain. Because <laughs> on this program, <laughs> some people are not acceptable. There's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a time I would, uh, I would uh, quote uh, a whole of, the whole of Psalm 34 from, mm. the, from the first uh, verse to the last verse. Mm. But I was living in sin. I mean, just the fact that people go on, on the prayer mountain and, and they do all, the, all that stuff. Uh, Jesus Christ said there are people who are calling him Lord, Lord, but he doesn't know them. This antics, you see, intimacy with God has positive results that are absolutely unquestionable. You sound like you're talking about the difference between religion and spirituality. Yeah, that's it. That's it. You so see, somebody can just be merely religious. Yeah, it is easy. It's the but easiest thing. Ever. They are fundamentally castrated. It's easy. The easiest thing to do in this world is to be religious. And God, by the way, God hates it. God hates it. I think it's, it's in Isaiah that he says, you guys, you're always sacrificing. Yeah. What is this you're doing trampling Isaiah my temple? Who told you to come? <clears throat> Who told you to come and trample in my temple? I am tired of your sacrifices. They were genuinely sacrificing, but he's tired of them. Why? Because they, he said their hearts are so far away. Mm -hmm. Intimacy with God is something to do with genuine hunger, genuine seeking God. And look, look at the results. Because once you are close to God, mm -hmm. have you ever seen someone who is repenting? As in someone who is... Uh, I've actually ever been one. <laughs> I didn't just see someone. <laughs> you need to it. continue being there. <laughs> because when you are close to God, the Bible says he lives in an approachable light. The yes. closer you are to God, the more you tend to realize some of the things that you're not doing right. Yes. And the more you want God to help you. God, help me here. I am failing short here. Please help me. So your closeness your to God, closeness to God illuminates your path. It illuminates your path. You see your the heart. You are not able you, to see God reveals to you things. Actually, there are some, there are some, there are some personal levels you can go to. 
um, Exodus 20 talks about the Ten Commandments. Yes. That is general. Mm -hmm. But in, in God, you might not have uh, committed adultery, you might not have murdered, mm -hmm. you might not have uh, stolen, stolen some, some, someone, you might not have called God's name in vain, mm -hmm. but when you're intimate with God, he kind of gives you some kind of other responsibility that just you alone. For are, example, you start doing. to realize you're spending more time on your phone. That's it. It's not right. That's it. That's but, it. But it's I, not among I, the I feel like giving you a... And your That's wife it. is not able to be with yes. you because every time you're on the phone. Yes. He says, put this aside. Now, intimacy with God is not a one-way traffic. God is going to demand some things from you somewhere. He's going to ask you, sacrifice this or put this aside for the sake of like this. A, like a goat or sheep when you sacrifice. <laughs> Sacrifice your time. Sacrifice watching. You know, I'm Arsenal. trying to get into the shoes and the mind of I the know, people watching. And we I know. To these I know. When you are, when you are, <laughs> when when you are intimate with God as a person, that's why I say this: you can't do intimacy yes. in in a crowd. Mm. It is just you and God. He He knows right. you. You know yourself, and so on. He He He, he go. He's going to tell you try to do this or do this for me. Yeah. He He told Abraham. Go and sacrifice your son. And the most interesting thing about Abraham, and I've read that story very many times, he was never told when to go. Mm. He was just told, go and sacrifice your son. But the Bible tells us that the very earliest morning, I mean the next op opportunity that came to him, he was out. Immediate, Immediate obedience. obedience. Intimacy with God has some things that we, we will need to obey. You might have obeyed all the Ten Commandments, yes. but there is something God is telling you, go and tell your wife your sorry. Mm. Ah, the African man. <laughs> go, go and to kiss say your sorry wife. To his wife. Yeah, go and kiss your wife. Go and go and read uh, read a, a, a book for, for for your kids before they sleep. God basically gives you these personal instructions that only internal you unctions. internal unctions, just only you Spiritual and unctions. him know, and maybe the devil. Okay, <laughs> just just it, that is that how how intimate it is. I get it. So that means that you get transformed. So it is very discontinuous for someone to claim or to someone to see going on the prayer mountains. I don't know where they go on prayer mountains. I don't know why they don't have valleys because God is all over prayer the place. Mountains. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> you go to the mountains and so on and so forth. And then you come and you do uh, these antics that we see. Mm. There is absolutely no intimacy with God. It's just relig religiosity. Okay. Yeah. So in other words, you're speaking with finality that you can't be intimate with God and fail in family leadership? You... you <laughs> Earlier on, we say that intimacy with God is not a silver bullet. All right. So we need to make sure, and this is this uh, those of us who are in the teaching uh, industry, ministry, mm. and so on, the call, call to teach. Mm. We need to make sure okay. that we are aware that we don't give, we don't tell people this is the secret, mm. this is the silver bullet. No, life has a tapestry of interconnected uh, things that we need to. Maybe it's like a lock with very many combinations. Right. So you might have intimacy with God, but you're not working, and that's just another danger. So money won't come. Money is not going to come just because you're intimate with God. But you're not using exactly. your hands to do anything. Exactly. Uh, Mike Murdoch normally asks if, <laughs> if prayer is the answer, if intimacy is the answer, how come intercessors are not millionaires? Mm. <laughs> they are in God's presence every single day. You have to shake the table carefully because it has some drinks yeah. in it. You are overshaking <laughs> the table in the world of the, of the intercessors. No. Intimacy way. with God doesn't solve all your problems. Because there are other spiritual there principles. There are other principles. Are like keys that exactly. open other doors. Yes. All right. By the way, briefly, because I see we just have about four minutes to end the program. Yeah. Does my wife's intimacy with God also matter, or I'm the one, the only one supposed to do this? Remember, we've said that there is no gatekeeper. And we've said that the curtain was torn into two. Therefore, anyone, the Bible calls those people who can go into God's presence, it calls them whosoever. <laughs> anyone now if it's if it's only the man who is trying to do this imagine how bad it is if both of the the man and the woman they are not intimate with god chances are that there's this trouble yeah there could be trouble and those guys that you're saying that they're not intimate with god and they're leading their families well questionable mm -hmm. it's very questionable mm -hmm. okay but if the two of you are intimate with god you can imagine how how far it's going to go and, and i'm starting to suspect also out of some bit of personal experience yes that the closer the wife and the husband come to god the, the, the closer, closer they are to each other to each other exactly 
That's because the feedback. Like the man is here, the woman is here, yeah. God is here, so each one of them is coming close to God. And the closer they converge yeah. towards God, yeah. the closer they are to, the, to each other. The closer they also come to exactly. each other. Exactly. That's the feedback I got from my wife uh, just a few days ago. Mm -hmm. That's feedback that has been missing for years because of lack of intimacy with God. So when I brought in this intimacy with God, out of the blue, we were just communicating. Now we're communicating easy. Okay, making jokes and so on and so forth and those funny little things. I'm tempted to ask some questions. Yeah, you can ask. I, I we, are we are very intimate with God who can share anything. Television because now when you say you are more intimate with your wife and so on and so forth, I am more... We need to be ending this problem. Yeah, we should have had two hours. Some, maybe in a minute or two, Yeah. practically what can a man therefore go and do in order to become more intimate with God? Please. From today onwards, one, two, three. One, please. two, three, I can say five. But mm -hmm. one, please mm -hmm. note that it is an absolute important and critical aspect of your life mm -hmm. if you are going to be a successful man mm -hmm. please make sure that you are seeking god and you have the hunger for god it starts from there make a decision to be hungry to seek god mm -hmm. because in god there is much more that you can be able to get in terms of perspective in your life that's the first thing mm -hmm. be in terms of um, seeking God, make a decision to do it, mm -hmm. and then start being hungry. We were watching something with my wife, and she and uh, this man called John Bevere was saying, "You hunger for what you feed on. If you feed on Arsenal, you hunger for Arsenal. If you feed on God's presence, you hunger for God's presence." And if which you means, feed on a boss? <laughs> shut up! <laughs> I'm trying to preach. <laughs> So secondly, the thing that you're supposed to do is basically prioritize. Yes. It's a very important thing. What is your irreducible minimum when it comes to seeking God? For mm. me, it's a, at a particular time and at a particular place, I have got to show up in God's presence whether mm -hmm. I feel it or not. Whether I feel like going or not. I've got to go there. Mm. But then number, number three, have this reverence for God that God is actually there, is listening. Mm. I don't like this. Sometimes we have, and I'm telling you, we have so much irreverence of God. Mm. Even in church itself, even when, with, with prayer. You hear people praying and their prayers are just like they're talking to each other. Mm. It's like God doesn't even exist. In your mind, just picture the idea that you are in the presence of God at God's throne room. Mm. You've got to be rever reverence or reverent of it. Mm. You've respectful. been in respectful. respectful. You've been in, in you've been in the in the president's uh, presence. Yes. Our president. Yes. What happens? You can't just be careless and go in yeah. in in his. This is a man. I see people even prostrate. They prostrate the king. The king of Uganda. Yes. The they king, they do that to prostrate. God. Have that reverence, not in church, mm. in your prayer closet. Just have that reverence. When you have that reverence that God is here, and th therefore your words are filled, the things that you're going to speak, and speak openly to him, then you start feeling the presence of God coming. Okay. God starts feeding and filling you. Yeah. It's kind of like reciprocal. And therefore, you become addicted to the presence of God. Every time you don't feel God's presence, even for two days, something is wrong. Like my friend normally says, my friend Hillary normally says, for him, he shuts down everything, he goes to the mountain. Because Must I'm not the feeling God. Of God or is just be felt or it can also just be believed that it is there. No, 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 no. Mm. Please, strive to mm. feel it. Because it's tangible and it's there. Are you... Pushing me to a corner of feelings in my relationship. No, I'm not God. pushing you to corners because mm. every intimacy has feelings. This is okay. one of them. Okay. I mean, why would you have be intimate without a feelings? Look into that camera, my brother, and say your final words to a man who is convinced about all these things and agrees with today's message, but is genuinely struggling to be intimate with God. Speak to him as we end. In life, as you will know, there are very many things that will happen to you. And if you want to be intimate with God, one of the things you need to realize is that it's not going to be just like that. It's going to take a process. And this process needs your hunger, it needs your commitment, and it needs your patience. But one of the things that I'm going to encourage you with is that God already wants you there. He already feels that you need to go to him. He's already waiting. He wants to be intimate with you just like 
you maybe want to be intimate with him. It's a no-brainer. It's not for a pastor. It's for everyone. So start today and be consistent. What can you do to be intimate with God? Learn how to pray. Learn how to read scriptures. If you do not know anything about these things I'm talking about, please just ask God to show you. Believe me, he will. Believe me, he will. Are you a man who just knows the acts of God or you are a man who knows the ways of God? Are you like Moses who knew the ways of God or you are like the Israelites who only understood the acts? Do these things matter in your life or they don't? Up to now, you're not convinced that this thing will really affect your family and your leadership and your marriage and your work. And after this program, you're just going to do nothing about it. Really. <laughs> I've had the opportunity of speaking on all the six continents of this world. I've written 17 books. I'm a CEO of an international leadership development firm that empowers leaders to transform nations. I'm a national president of a union that has more than 4 million men that I lead by God's grace. I've spoken to nations and the big and the small. But I want to tell you that this topic of today, I personally relate with it. I identify with it and I know that whoever gives it attention will see new results in his life. As a man, <laughs> I am strongly but humbly challenging you to probe further this critical aspect of you being intimate, closer with the Creator. Many things will turn around for you. Remember that statement that Coach Lawrence mentioned here. That not everything that counts can be counted. And not everything that can be counted actually counts. Just because you may not touch it, it's not visible, it's not you know, tangible, that intimacy, that relationship, that journey with God, does not necessarily mean that it doesn't count. It could be the deciding factor for whether you're going to be just a mere man of success on earth or a person of significance and impact and influence and be an agent of transformation. A man's pursuit for intimacy with God. Let's go and do something about it. Live exemplarily, love authentically and lead relationally. This has been the Inspired Family Leader Program with Samuel E. Bakutana hosting our brother, Coach Lawrence Namare. Get to Facebook, get to Twitter, uh, former Twitter X, go to Google and uh, put in the name Lawrence Namare. You will find a lot of his resources that you can continue to, to, to feast on. Podcasts, books, articles, blogs, to mention but a few. Let's continue to build one another so that we may expand our family leadership capacity for national transformation. Happy consecration and enthronement, West Wenzori Diocese that is coming up tomorrow morning. See you next time.